Good morning, I'm Kate Pollan with Arrow Tree Creek LLC and I'm your realtor with heart. I love real estate and I want to help my clients love the transaction also and part of that is working with a professional like myself. Uh, I'm a member of the Boulder Area Board of Realtors which means I'm held to a higher level of ethical practices in this, uh, this state of Colorado and I hold a broker's license. I have been selling for 18 years and I've worked with small transactions and I've worked with multi-million dollar transactions. And so um, part of the delicate balance with real estate is knowing how to get the job done, which is taking a property from offer to close, but also working with different personalities and uh, different walks of life. So I really like people and so this is a good niche for me. Today I would like to talk about preparing your house for selling. So with a raise of hands, who here has uh, sold a property, a condo, or a house, or a piece of land in the last five years? Oh. Oh. Seven years? Okay, because the average time that people stay in a house is about seven years before they go ahead and sell it. Um, so to prepare your property for sale, uh, you view it from the eyes of the buyer. Yeah, any time and money spent on cleaning, repairing, and removing clutter will maximize its appearance. Um, I'm going to help guide you through a way to increase your profits and hopefully result in a faster sale. So we talk about curb appeal. First impressions make a huge deal. Does anybody know any statistics about first impressions on the human level? What do you mean, like person to person? Person to person. When you have never met someone before, I think it's like a portion of a second portion of a second. So imagine the same thing happens when you go to view a property. You notice things right away. It could be a smudge mark on the door handle. It could be the mud on the step. It's things like that that set motion in motion someone's head what's going on in this property. And sometimes it's hard to overturn that once it's already come up. So curb appeal is everything and that means from the street, when you look at the property, does it just say, wow, I want to go in there and I want to see this place? <laughs> Here's a property that I drove by yesterday, and it had three snowmobiles out front, one on a trailer, and um, they had a, uh, this was like a swing of some kind, and they had some random chairs here. And, Really, it did not do much for her reveal. So this would be the bad example of how to prepare your house for sale. I think it looks good. All on top of that snowmobile. So let's talk about the, uh, what the buyer experiences before stepping foot inside that matters most. First of all, we want to replace or repaint the front door and trim. I can help you stage it. I offer a free welcome mat that's brand new, and so we make the front door look absolutely amazing. Cobwebs and grime are not welcome. Uh, we move all garbage cans, extra building, garden materials, kids' toys into the, gar into the garage or shed. We check the gutters and the roof for dry rot and leaks. We prune bushes, trees, maintain all planted areas, removing anything dead looking. We sweep all areas and walkways. You want to check and repair all screens and wash all windows. And if you can't wash all the windows, at least make sure those visible from the street are looking great. You want to test all the fences, gates, latches, if the front door squeaks or sticks or anything like that, fix it. Check the external structures such as jacuzzis, gazebos, sheds, repair and fix if, you need, if it needs it. And we use driveway cleaner to remove all oil stains from the driveway and the garage floors. And we find a low maintenance potted plant to place at each door entry at least. Uh, a lot of people like to use plants within the house and you can find a lot of fake plants that look great and they have nice pots with them and that's a great way to just cheer up a property. Uh, if you have an old viney type thing that's going across the whole living room and it's got three leaves hanging on it, that's probably not the plant that we want to use. We all know what we're talking about there. So here's an example of a way to spruce up the um, appearance of a property without actually having to spend a lot of money doing it. Uh, this is a property that I had at 1900 Edgewood, and unfortunately I couldn't find a decent photo of it, but 
red brick with some white here, and it had a tar and gravel roof. And when the seller bought it, they went ahead and painted the entire exterior gray and put on a metal roof. And it increased the, the view from the street of the property by at least 50%. Gorgeous, gorgeous way to do it. Another way to increase the value of the property just from the street is by changing the facade of it. So it wouldn't be like popping the top necessarily, which could be a nice way to make a house look great, but um, this person just added a dormer here, or a, an entryway, by bringing it out from the main roof line. And then they put a garage in the back here. And it's a really nice bungalow kind of uh, style home. So that's a great way to... So is that that's the same home? It is not, oh. but I oh. wanted to show oh. what it would look like. <laughs> These yeah, homes are a dime a dozen gotcha. in the Martin yeah. Acres. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Martin Acres. That's right across the street from me. It's a Martin Acres home, and, yes. and Sobo did it, and they took the roof off, too, and changed the angles a little, just to give them a different character. Okay, right? so yeah, but they did a great job of, of just giving it a little facelift there. So let's talk about helping a buyer move in mentally. What does that mean? Uh, someone is living in a home, and it gives off this aura that it's owned by someone. And so what you want to do is create inside the home a feeling of welcomeness. That, yeah, it's livable, but someone isn't maintaining the space. And so they can mentally see themselves moving into it. And what does that involve? Going in each room. Uh, just cleaning if you can. Rearranging furniture. Less furniture is more. Remove all unnecessary objects off the furniture. You don't want to have lots of clumps of stuff. You know, I collect frogs, and I have a lot of frogs out. I'd have to get rid of a bunch of those. Uh, family photos are telling a buyer that there's a family here, and ooh, it might be bad if I take over on them. So you want to get rid of those. Um, appliances from countertops, that's a big one. Messages on fridges. Organize the closets and clothes. <coughs> and bath towels. It's great if you can just get rid of whatever bath towels you have and just go with white. And we call them ornamental white because you don't even want to use them. They want to look untouchable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and well, men keep the <laughs> Another reason to do that. <laughs> what else do we do before the showing start? Um, I mean, this may seem intuitive, but a lot of people forget to do these things. Check light fixtures, make sure they're working, leaking plumbing. If you have any valuables in the property, to hide them, put them in a safe, get them out of the house. We don't want you worrying because licensed agents come through and they are with their buyers, but uh, you never know what might happen. Clean the fireplace, locate all manuals, clean the stove, microwave oven, put all the pet stuff away, um, and then, I forget, this one was, oh, anything that's not attached to the property, so cabinets and mirrors and special uh, light fixtures. If you don't want to sell those at the property, you want to remove them before showings start. So your role as the seller is every showing matters. Um, you want to keep lights on during the day. And I know it's kind of corny, but when you have things baking in a house, it smells really good and really inviting and people just want to devour the house. You want to have soft music playing. And um, if you are at home and the doorbell rings and someone says, hey, saw the sign, can we come in and look at it? Don't be afraid to let them in. Make sure that they're not a shady character, of course. We want to make sure people are safe. But um, we want as many showings as, as we can, whether or not they're working with a realtor or just a neighbor passing by. Because sometimes neighbors are the, your best uh, ally for selling your property if they like the neighborhood. Or enemy. <laughs> what I do is I schedule all the showings. Um, I set things up inside the house to help it sell. So I have brochures, I have information about the neighborhood, schools, uh, comps for the property. Um, <laughs> and uh, I ask for feedback from realtors and I present all offers in a timely manner. And so with all those things, we get your house ready and it sells and we're all happy at closing. Um, 
So basically today I spoke to you about preparing your home for selling and the three main points that I'd like to talk about um, or review or just the curb appeal is really important. Also there's tricks to you know making the exterior and the interior feel like it's ready for someone to move into and uh, what our different roles are in the process and uh, most importantly that I want to get things sold for the price that you want. So call me, Kate Pollan. Um, I have a couple of giveaways today. These are the Magic Grip Jar <coughs> Opener. <laughs> but it also is a garlic peeler and a lint remover. I won one last time. That's very exciting. It looks better. I, I, <laughs> and I use it for all three in the, in the same, you know. <laughs> the the jar cats opener. smell a little garlic. -y. You're a multitasker. <laughs> yeah. The jar opener always works best with the... Uh, second jar opener on the bottom. So, all right, so real quick, I have a couple of questions for you. Let's see who might be able to answer these. One is, and I didn't cover this in the discussion, but when it comes to selling real estate, there's two realtors to the transaction. There's the realtor who's representing the seller who's selling the property, and then there's the realtor who's representing the buyer who's buying the property. Sometimes it's the same realtor representing both, but either way, that realtor, both realtors get paid by the seller. Okay, So when I'm working with a buyer, essentially my commission gets paid for by the seller, typically. It doesn't have to work that way. All commissions are negotiable in the state, but that's typically how it works. And so a lot of people think, okay, well, when I'm listing my house with a realtor, chances are they are also going to bring the buyer. Uh, and so my question to you is this, what percentage of sales involve a co-op broker, which means both the listing agent and the selling agent? 10 percent. 15 percent. 80 to 85 percent. So that means that when you're wanting your realtor to do an open house, it really does not produce a buyer. All, most buyers come from a pool of realtors who are working together trying to find their perfect house for their buyer. And so usually you'll see two people on a transaction, a listing agent and a buying agent. Uh, okay, so who said, I think Jim, you were the highest there. Do you want red or blue? We misunderstood the question. I want to read you. They want to read you. We misunderstood the question. Yeah. Okay, who can tell me here. how many um, skidoos were in front of the screen? Three. 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 Oh, they're not. Maybe they weren't all skidoos. Uh, this is true. <laughs> gotcha. I heard a three over here. No, that's right. And who can give me three of the top ten uh, ways to maximize curb appeal? Change your front door. Get rid of the dead stuff. Okay. Fake plants. You clean your screens. Okay. okay, well, you're all winners. Who wants it? George wants it. No, you've got to really have two to use those effectively. Give it to somebody. Clean your windows. Clean your windows, okay. They're great. They're great. Thank you. Any questions? Good job, Kate. Thanks, Kate. Thank you. Yeah. to mention one other thing you'll take out of your medicine cabinet before showing your house is prescription drugs. Mm -hmm. It's actually uh, quite a bit of theft that happens when you go through and you find your Percocets in there mm -hmm. and then go over to the local junior high and sell them. You have no but if they're relaxed, maybe they put in an offer. <laughs> 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 Thank you.